My name is Brian Christensen, the Vice President of Public Sector Solutions at Sierra Cedar, and I'm with Susan Willis, the Chief Financial Officer from Wichita Public Schools. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Thank you for being my guest in the very first episode of On Cloud Nine with Sierra Cedar. Uh, let's get started with an overview of Wichita Public Schools and your very successful Oracle Cloud ERP implementation that occurred last year. With 94 schools and nearly 10,000 employees, Wichita Public Schools is the largest school district in the state of Kansas. It's dedicated to the mission of preparing every student to be future ready, empowered to dream, believe, and achieve. Quite an inspiring mission, I could say. Yes. Um, the project with you kicked off in early um, January 2020, um, prior to uh, COVID interruptions, and went live in March 2021. The scope exactly. included Oracle Cloud financials, projects and grants, and procurement. There were 22 district employees and nine Sierra Cedar consultants involved, and they worked almost entirely remotely um, due to the prevailing impact of COVID during the implementation timeline. Um, so it's something quite unique, and I'm sure we'll be getting into that uh, during the course of the questions that we have. Um, the format of On Cloud 9 webcast is that I'll be asking you nine questions to enable the audience to learn more about the project, outcomes that you've experienced, as well as lessons learned. Um, I'm looking forward to the discussion. Um, I've never done anything like this, and and uh, and I really appreciate you you going through and and being our first guest. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. The first question is is why did the dis district decide to migrate from Oracle e Business Suite over to cloud applications? Sure. So uh, Wichita Public Schools had been an Oracle EBS customer since 2005, and we were generally pleased with the product. Uh, our last upgrade uh, had been in 2014, and we were actually ending a support contract period. We were going to need to do something with the product. So as a team, we met and we discussed whether we wanted to look at an upgrade to EBS um, or, or look at the Oracle Cloud option. We had been doing some kind of um, Googling of, of that product, and we had had a couple demos. We had been quite dependent upon internal IT resources in, in EBS. And we were looking for a product that gave the functional user a little bit more control. Uh, additionally, we were looking for ways to reduce the, the, the total cost of ownership, kind of get out of the hardware, middleware um, world. And we really wanted some of the cloud functionality that we had seen as far as getting out of some of the manual processing functions that we were still experiencing with EBS. Uh, we knew that a lot of Oracle's development had been occurring in their cloud product, and we wanted to leverage some of those investments for our school district. Uh, we definitely liked the look and feel of the cloud product uh, compared to EBS. And then finally, we knew that Oracle's investment in cybersecurity would far outweigh our ability to um, financially keep up with security for the on-premise solution. So kind of for those reasons, we, we took the plunge. That all makes sense. Smart choice and good timing. The second question is, is what objectives were met with the project? So, uh, you know, kind of looking back at the reasons we just talked about, I think most of our objectives were met, if not all of them. So we we are far less dependent upon internal IT today. Uh, we've been live now for about five months, and I'd say we've gone from being 90% dependent on IT resources to about 15%, and, and, and that continues to decline a bit. Um, additionally, we had negotiated a pretty solid licensing contract with Oracle for the next five years with an option to renew for another five. So when that period is is kind of said and done, we think we'll have saved over $2 million in, in the total cost of ownership um, through the process. So we're very happy with that. Uh, additionally, we've implemented Oracle's expense module, which has allowed for online submission of expense reports. We moved to paperless purchasing card reporting. The keying of invoices into accounts payable has completely gone away. We've automated um, our approval and workflow systems. And from an operational standpoint, we've maybe had one um, short-term outage compared to previous issues with EBS going down. And so we feel that's a significant improvement. And our projects and grants looks really good. So we're very, we're very happy with, um, with the product so far. Great, great. That's great to hear. So the third question is, what was the biggest revelation or, or takeaway from the project, the whole experience? Sure. Um, I actually, 
being an EBS customer, we we our staff was extremely well versed with with that product, and we thought we thought the process would be basically a, a quick um, implementation. And it 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 really it it was a little bit tougher than than we thought it was, only because there's just a lot of decision um, points in in Oracle Cloud. And it really does need to be looked at as, as a new implementation and not an upgrade. Um, mm -hmm. The system is very intuitive, but inexperienced end users can cause a lot of headaches if you skimp on the training pieces. So um, th that that came as a little bit of a surprise to us. Um, and I would certainly uh, recommend to you know future customers that they they focus on those items. Yeah, yeah, that's helpful advice for sure. Um, there's a lot of people I think that are that are in the same boat and they're going to go through the same experience and it's good for them to understand what to expect. Sure. So now for a fun question, mm -hmm. if you had to pick a song that would best describe your journey to the cloud, what would it be? OK, so I've thought about this a little bit. I'm, I'm dating myself here, but I would say it's somewhere between highway to hell and stairway to heaven. <laughs> Um, and I'd say f about five months post go, post go live, I'd say we we're probably at I'm still standing. So uh, <laughs> it actually, it's it's been it, it was a great journey. Um, it had its highs, it had its lows. You mentioned that um, we definitely had a had to switch gears during um, the height of pandemic shutdown and move to a remote um, implementation model, which had uh, had its challenges, had its good points as well. So. Um, we we survived and and we're very very happy with with what we have um, today. That's great. Now I've got those three songs in my head. I know. <laughs> Probably for the rest of the day. Sorry about that. <laughs> those are '70s and '80s classics. Exactly. So yeah, we won't go there. That's great. <laughs> So if you could go back in time and give yourself and the project team advice um, during the project kickoff meeting, what would that be? Uh, I think I think document document document. I I think again because of our 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 switch to remote a remote setting. I I think we should have documented some decisions a little bit better um, because again in the heat of user acceptance testing, it's it's easy to forget discussions you had you know three to six months earlier or um, something that changed between environments that um, that that if you didn't have your documents really really well um, you know available to, to review I, you could get caught on a few things and, and we did on our side um, where we had to basically backtrack and, and and go back and check some flags that maybe we didn't we didn't pay enough attention to so i think documentation don't skimp on the end user training that was mm -hmm. probably the biggest um, mistake we made in the, in our in our implementation process was because of a kind of a compressed timeline, again, more pandemic cause than anything else, we had to kind of cut some of those activities out and we paid the price those first few months. So don't skimp on the end user training. And I think we probably would have given ourselves maybe three to six months longer um, on our timeline just because of those things that we learned along the way. Yeah. So instead of 14 months um you know maybe stretching that to 16 or 17 and then you know yes. it sounds like because of the remote working relationships um you know certainly preserving a lot of those decisions and conversations and documentation um even more than what was done on the project as much as possible it sounds like would be your advice so yes. um, that's great thanks for sharing that So the next question, question six, is um, what's been the reaction from the user community outside of the central office, out in the schools and the, in the departments? So again, I think initially there was that that feeling of being overwhelmed. It's, it was new um, and we were training again using uh, Microsoft Teams, so we weren't using our typical face to face training model. We were trying to cover a lot of material in a relatively short amount of time. So I, I think that initial feeling was, whoa, <laughs> this is a lot and uh, how are we going to do this? But as time has progressed, the users are getting are, are getting more comfortable with these changes, um, especially when when we, they kind of take a step back and they look at what they're doing. It's really more uh, of a timing issue. 
before in EBS, they could kind of batch their work and they would pick up a pile of purchasing card transactions maybe once a month at their convenience and work that. Um, but that didn't really give us good visibility into what um, what items uh, were, were we were buying and how budgets were being used. Now transactions are loading daily and emails go out uh, to those end users notifying them of actions they need to take. So that's been a real adjustment um, as far as just the timing of doing more of a daily task uh, than just batching that all into one big day of work. So that, that, that's a big um, process change. Um, but they're they're adjusting um, and right now we're going back and doing a lot of retraining and really focusing on more of the why. Why are we asking them to do the tasks that we're doing? So for example, um, we're looking at that whole procurement um, process kind of start to finish. So moving from the purchasing requisition to the purchase order to receiving to the invoice to payment. And we're stressing the importance of accuracy and matching those documents, you know, through the uh, through the, an online process, and stressing the importance of timeliness and how that impacts kind of everyone through that whole cycle. So we have high hopes that um, this time next year we're really going to see the fruits of the investment as our end users get more and more comfortable through the process. Yeah, yeah. There's always that natural adjustment time for for process improvements and. And it's good that they recognize that those are improvements and and they understand kind of the the new tasks and you know even the new frequency that's involved with um within the context of the overall improvements but yeah there's always that adjustment period and um and it's good to hear that um that you have your handle on on when you think that that'll kind of clear out and, and folks will you know be fully acclimated to the new processes i'm sure it's made it a little bit more complicated with just the, you know, the ever changing dynamic involved with, you know, are people in the office or people outside the office and and communication is, you know, is just that much more complex these days. But um, but yeah, hopefully over the next six to nine months, um, you know, everything will, will settle out as far as um, the change impacts and, and, you know, you guys will purely be able to enjoy the the, the fruits of the process improvements. Yes, I, I think the uh, kind of another a little I wouldn't call it a mistake, but maybe if we would do it again, we probably would not have had a go live in March because for school districts that's just on the um, kind of the tail end of the school year and we were actually you know starting to shut people down from purchasing. So we yeah. did some training and then we locked them out of the system. So we probably would rethink that go live date uh, if we had to do it again. But there, our end users are coming along nicely. I think they're really starting to see the benefits of the system. And I, again, I think that timeline is just about accurate. They get through this school year and regular purchasing activities. They're going to really um, get very, very comfortable with the system and, and really, I think, enjoy using it. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. Question number seven is, um, what are the biggest differences, um, in your opinion, between Oracle Cloud applications and, and the Oracle eBusiness Suite? So I think there, there, there are several, but I, the biggest difference for me is, is visibility. So it, when you have an invoice, you know, that you get shoved in front of you on a desk and you sign it kind of on the fly, you're not really looking at anything, you're just signing documents. There's a lot more visibility for approvers. There's a lot more um, visibility for um, the accounting staff where they see those transactions being loaded. They, 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 they see the budgets being relieved. Um, we're not quite finished with all our dashboard and infolet setup, but when those are actually up and, 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 and working well, that visibility from where programs sit at any given time from a budget perspective with more real time transactions posting as opposed to monthly batches that will really allow um, for, at least on our side for budget and finance staff to be a lot more responsive if there are budget shortages or it, it, the budget isn't being utilized at the right pace. So we'll be able to you know, support our schools um, a, with a lot faster um, and more accurate information. And certainly those managers can uh, can go out and look themselves. And it's a quick glance at a dashboard as opposed to kind of uh, fishing through a manually kept Excel spreadsheet. We've never had that kind of visibility before and we're very, very excited about it. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think even folks that implemented systems like eBusiness Suite 20 years ago, 
you know, they expected to have that. Um, but it's only now, you know, with the, the new technology and, um, you know, embedded uh, analytics and, and things like that, that enable folks to be where they thought they would be 15 or 20 years ago. So it's nice to, to see that the promise of, of ERP applications is, is really taking hold in, in different organizations. It's exactly right. It's very exciting. So another fun question, um, are there any humorous stories that you recall from the project? If so, maybe, if so, maybe you can share one with us. So, so I wouldn't say this is exactly humorous, but we certainly, um, uh, we wouldn't have recommended anyone kind of switching midstream to um, remote implementation during a pandemic shutdown. Um, I think, I think both, um, both Wichita and Sierra Cedar pivoted extremely well to using Microsoft Teams, but I do wish I had a dollar for every time we heard the phrase, I think you're on mute. Um, we probably could have paid for part of the project <laughs> with <Right>. those funds. <laughs> so but again, it was, I have nothing but praise for an admiration really for, for everyone on the project for working through those challenges and, and certainly the stress of, of, of just being in a pandemic uh, and really keeping the focus on getting the project complete. Um, so it was great. I'm sure there were a few cameo appearances from there, kids and pets as well. A lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot of dogs barking, a lot of conversation about dogs uh, barking right. and um, UPS people ringing bells or, or Amazon delivery. So yeah, it's, it was, it was definitely um, allowed us a little unique view into everyone's home life just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, maybe in the future for the icebreaker, we'll do something like uh, let's meet the pets and, and, <laughs> and have everybody introduce yeah. their cats and dogs and, and parakeets. Get that, get that all out else. of the way, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's great. So now the final question, question number nine. Uh, why was Sierra Cedar selected to be the district's partner on this important project? Uh, I, I think it was several um, reasons. I would say in general, it was a, the combination of Sierra Cedar's service footprint and certainly um, the cost structure. We really liked the expertise that Sierra Cedar brought to the table, especially in terms of procurement and our projects and grants. Those two modules had a lot of changes for us um, and Sierra Cedar's expertise was was top notch. We We could not have done the project without um, uh, those consultants that worked particularly on those two areas, um, we would highly recommend them for 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 any, to anybody. Um, we actually kind of the 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 deal that clinched the deal for us was Sierra Cedar's change management approach, um, and we would highly 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 recommend future customers focus on that piece being just as important as as user user acceptance testing because that is an area with um, the pandemic we we felt we shortchanged a little bit. And I think we did pay a little bit of the price for it. So certainly putting that as, as a top priority would be would be critical for any successful implementation. Great. Well, I appreciate the compliments and um, and I'm glad we we earned them um, during the project with you. Absolutely. Um, so certainly on on behalf of Sierra Cedar, um, I want to let you know that we sincerely appreciate the strong relationship that we share with the district. Um, you deserve all the success that that you've um, that you've gotten through this project with the hard work that the that the district employees have put forth, and it's really been our pleasure to work with you. And with regards to this webcast, I'd really like to thank you for for participating in this with me. Um, uh, it's the first one that we've done, and I hope it was it was fun for you. It certainly was fun for me, and it's it's always great speaking with you. And I'm sure that there's many listeners out there that um, that are going to watch this and listen to it that. Um, that really appreciate you sharing your perspective and um, lessons learned and, and outcomes from the project with them. So I wish everyone out there the very best. Um, thanks for listening. Have a great day. Susan, I don't know if you have any wrap up words, but again, thank you for participating. It was my pleasure and I, I hope all your listeners good luck in, in looking at, at their options related to the um, their change to potentially Oracle Cloud and, and looking at Sierra Cedar as a good partner because they you definitely were for us. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Susan. Take Thank care. Thank you. You too. Take care, Bye -bye. everyone.